ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the first match preview after the international break. Now, obviously, it's um, good, to get, good to get back again, again, you know, good to see Celtic back, darling, obviously, at the national. But, um, sorry about the lag there, guys, I don't know what happened there. But um, Scotland also did uh, decent uh, in the internationals, obviously, um, lost to Denmark, beat Moldova, and obviously beat uh, Austria. So, get a good chance of qualifying for the, uh, the World Cup in 2022 next year. But we're here to talk about Celtic in the match preview today again, still take on Ross County tomorrow afternoon in the Celtics first game after the transfer deadline as well. Postcall has new options in the squad after Dylan Day of um obviously Felipe Jota, Georges uh ja I will call him Georges because his last name is hard to pronounce. And Carmen Carter Vickers Liam Scales joined just before that too. Edward and Christy have left the building I mean there will be at least two changes the starting 11 from the game at Ibrox. The team have lost their two games against Altmar and uh, Rangers. Uh, they had a torrid night in Holland, but um, ultimately qualified for the Open League, which is the main thing, we qualified for the Open League. The game at Ibrox could have gone either way, and despite the home side's um, dominance in the league, Celtic held their own, and we're lucky. We ch- they made chances, they made their talking points. I mean, um, these are games Celtic need to be winning and keep, keep up pace with their rivals. Celtic, this game, Ross County tomorrow, guys, I'm um, talking about. Um, excelled at home recently and you would hope that you continue that run against Ross County. Couldn't he not sell to obviously out of the League Cup last season prompting angry demonstrations outside the stadium last year. A lot has changed since then for both sides. Uh, both have new managers, a lot of new faces and a lot and a new direction. Obviously Edward and Christie are gone. New sign of Felipe Jota could start in the left for Hoops and Kyogo will be missing for at least three to four weeks. Get on that a wee minute guys. Um, manager obviously now we'll fit, obviously, uh, George S. Gia Kamakis, pretty sure that's his name, at sent probably straight for the middle, centre forward. They're also, um, the issue of travel, Tom Rogic, uh, been playing uh, the other side of the world, and depending on where they get back and general fitness, it could, you know, could affect the, the general starting of living. It's going to be an interesting lineup. Um, but for now, let's get the Kilo's injury and stuff like that, what's going to happen tomorrow. So it's a sold out parkhead tomorrow. Good to see. You normally see that all the time, but now, you know, you're actually expecting a full house like you've seen the last couple of times because even though it's just Ross County, it's great to be back at Parkhead. I mean, being back to watch football your team instead of watching it on a TV, just sitting there and, so obviously, you've got to do that for a wee game so you can't get away, you know what I mean? But sitting there all the time, not having, not thinking, you know, you're not, you're not going to the game. But it's a packed out Parkhead for tomorrow's game. So, Celtic Kyogo Furuhashi will be out of action for at least a month, um, let me just get the information up. Uh, it's confirmed that his side will be without striker Kyogo for actually for the next three to four weeks in his press conference. His 26 year old picked up a knock whilst on international duty with Japan as they face China, who was forced off the field with what was thought to be a knee injury despite being unchallenged. Of course, this left many Celtic fans worried of what sort of injury the Japanese front man would have been sustained. Speaking in the press conference ahead of the Hoops return to the SBFL action this weekend, Post Cogger confirmed that Kyogo would miss around a month of action as reports had suggested late last night. So obviously Ronnie Charters of STV said uh, today around about 1 o'clock this afternoon said on Twitter and Post Cogger says Kyogo will be out for around 3 to 4 weeks after picking up an injury on international duty. Obviously it will come likely, uh, obviously what will likely be uh, comes a blow, a bit, you know, blow to Ange and his squad after blistering start which Farashi made in his opening games as a Celtic player scoring 7 and 9 appearances. This will now obviously more put more emphasis uh, emphasis on the deadline day of signing Georges Giamakis um, who will now have to hit the ground running right from the off either that or the, the only other strike of the club, Albin Ayeti, will need to take a shot in his side when it comes. Uh, thankfully, Keogh's injury isn't long term, however, he'll be missing some key European, European and domestic ties in next month, which is a bit disappointing. So, obviously, you'll miss um, key European games. This includes trips to Betis, Aberdeen, and as well as hosting by Leverkusen. I'll do the, you know, the wee guy does the draw for the European Champions League, do that guy for obviously the teams, and, and you'll miss that. So, you'll miss Raul Betis, Aberdeen, and by Leverkusen in the Europa League. Uh, so obviously injury to Kyogo is a big blow, there's no doubt about it. Um, and I wish him a speedy recovery, however, it is an opportunity for Jota, Ayeti and most of all, George S. J. Marcus. This is obviously time for new heroes now, obviously Kyogo, uh, definitely a hero. But can't wait to get him back. Sad to see him on 
obviously got the scar from him, sad to see him obviously injured, hopefully he gets speedy recovery, but it's time obviously Yota, Ayeti and obviously Georges Giamakis, I mean, we've heard most about him, 26 goals, um, the highest in his league and he's still got relegated, I mean, you, you can't fault the striker there, he was scoring the goals, he was top of goal scorer for the league and it was, I guess it was just his team really, so hopefully we can do well this season with him. New number 7, Henrik Larsson, a lot of good players have played in that shot, the likes of um, Henrik Larsson, brilliant. Magnificent, <laughs> the magnificent, the mic. I can't even say that word. The magnificent seven. So hopefully, um, George S. J. Marcus can do that as well. He uh, looks a good striker. Looks like he can hold the ball when it comes up to him. Turn, you know what I mean? Like, but like the way Edward the Bailey played, the way they were at Celtic, you know, hold the ball up and turns, and it's good. Good to see that. Uh, I don't know if a Yeti will get um, a chance. A Yota will definitely. I think he'll start tomorrow. Um, but thank guys, I'm gonna go for a three 0 win against Ross County. It could be more. I like to see more. Um, a, th a thrashing tomorrow would be nice. I'm going three 0 guys. Uh, match day vlog out tomorrow, guys. Around about um, six pm or something like that when uh, the match is finished. Right about that time when I finish editing it. But guys, thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, and that is my map prediction for tomorrow's game against Ross County. Thanks for watching.